Hey guys, it's Trina, and this is my second video in my series of audiobook reviews. Things like my overall reading of the book and my thoughts on the plot, the characters, the writing, all of that stuff is still going to be found in my wrap-ups and my book reviews and series reviews. So if I have already reviewed any of the books mentioned in this video today, they will be linked in the description so you can find my full thoughts on the books and their stories overall. But this is just going to be a video of reviewing the narration and the voice acting, and if I recommend listening to any of these books. I am going to be reviewing the last five audiobooks that I listened to and you can check the description for timestamps if there is one review that you want to jump straight to and you don't care so much about the others and also in that description box I am going to be putting links to audible.com. I am not an affiliate with them and I don't even use audible but audible does have free samples so that you guys can like listen to the narration and see if it's one that you like. So the first three audiobooks that I have recently finished they are all part of a series. They are the across the Universe trilogy by Beth Revis. These books are Across the Universe, A Million Suns, and Shades of Earth, and I listened to all three of them via audiobook. I do have a non-spoiler full series review up on this trilogy if you want to hear my full thoughts on it, but this is a YA science fiction series about a girl who is traveling to a new planet, and the trip is going to take 350 years to get there, so she is frozen, and for some reason she finds herself waking up 50 years too soon. She hasn't gotten to the planet yet. All all three of the books in this series do have two points of views, so we have two voice actors. One does Amy, one does Elder. They are the two main characters in this series. And book one has different audiobook narrators than books two and three. Book one was narrated by Lauren Ambrose and Carlos Santos, and the first book is the one that was my least favorite in terms of narration. I did not think that those voice actors did a great job, but the thing is, is I honestly have trouble sometimes separating out what is the fault of the writing versus what is the fault of the narration. The writing and therefore the way in which these narrators had to speak was in very short clipped sentences. There was not a lot of flow here. I wasn't liking the narration and I wasn't liking the story. And if I had been reading the print book, I think I would have been far more likely to DNF that book and this series completely. So although I will say that I did not like the audiobook of book one, it is what kept me reading. It's the only reason why I was able to finish that book. The other two books were narrated by Tara Carroza and Lucas Salvano. I liked them much better, and again, I can't tell if this is because of their voice acting or if it's because of the writing, because I could see throughout the course of this series, the writing and the character development and stuff really grew, and although I enjoyed these narrators more than the narrators of book one, they were pretty average in terms of what I usually listen to with audiobooks. The only note that I made, I did not notice this in book two, maybe it wasn't there, maybe this narrator changed, but Lucas Salvano in book three, I did notice that he started giving some really comical and weird voices to some of the side characters. Some of his character voices just weren't for me and didn't seem to match the characters. I didn't read the print version of any of the books in this series, so I can't actually compare was the print format or the audio format the better choice. All I can tell you is that I had some issues with some of the narration but I also firmly believe that listening to the audiobooks is what got me through this series. And I had a long gap between book two and book three being available for me from my library, and I was like itching, really wanting to start book three. So I guess it is an indicator that I did enjoy listening to this series. The next audiobook that I finished was A World Without You, also by Beth Revis, and this one is the story of a young boy named Bo who thinks that he has superpowers, but his family thinks he has delusions and they have sent him to his school that is for kids and teens that have mental illnesses. Our main character Bo's girlfriend has just died and he thinks he has the ability to travel through time so this story is his story of dealing with her death and thinking that he can change it. This one was narrated by PJ Oakland and Sarah Naughton and my thoughts on this narration I really did not enjoy this audiobook. Anytime you start an audiobook, there's always a voice that comes on and says the title of the book, the author, and then who the narrators are. And sometimes whoever says that line is not one of the actual narrators, and sometimes that line is just like a computerized voice. So when I hit play on this audiobook, that spiel starts, and I sat there and thought, this is totally a computerized automatic voice, right? No, that was the narrator. PJ Oakland narrated this book and he sounded like a robotic voice the entire time. It was so monotonous, so lifeless, so 
void of emotion. There are some scenes in the second half of the book that do call for a lot of emotion and I did think that he did a good job bringing that emotion at that time but by then it was too little too late for me. The vast majority of this book felt very lifeless to me and that could have been a character trait of both but whether or not it was intentional it made it a very boring story and to me it felt like this story stretched on forever and that not much ever happened. I really did not enjoy it. And the other narrator was Sarah Naughton. She plays Bo's sister Phoebe and I thought she did a great job. But the thing is the character of Phoebe only has like six chapters in this whole book so she doesn't have you know very many scenes and chapters to narrate. I probably would not recommend listening to this one via audio. If you have the option to read the print format I would say that it's probably the better choice. The last audiobook that I am reviewing in this video today is Their Fractured Light by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This is the third book in the Starbound trilogy. This is a series of companion novels, so each of the three books in the series follow different characters. The overarching plot is that there's this businessman who like owns so many businesses and so much technology and stuff, and in some of his pursuits of finding new travel and new technology, he has accidentally ripped a rift in the universe and discovered other beings. In each book we are following a set of two different characters that are somehow tied into this and in this third book we are following a hacker and a con artist. They are both trying to infiltrate his business and like take him down. Both of their plans go wrong and they have to work together to get out of it. This audiobook was narrated by Kim I Guest and McLeod Andrews and I thought both of these narrators did an amazing job. These narrators brought their characters to life so well. The emotion with the personality, bringing the story to life, they really did a great job. There are sections of this book that are the point of view of the alien beings in the series. The way that the audiobook did that was it added in like this echo effect and these background noises and it was like this really scratchy quality to the voice when they read that scene and it was so very creepy. There are no music or sound effects in any of the other chapters, just those couple of pages from the aliens, but I really enjoyed listening to this one on audio. The only downside is that towards the end of this book, a lot of action started happening and it happened in a way that was so quick that I did miss some things. Books one and two in this series are narrated by other voice actors and I did not listen to those audiobooks so I can't say if those were good or not. I did read the text version of both books one and two and I will say that I think for me having read the text version was something that worked better for me because I was able to absorb some of those snippets, some of the action scenes a little bit better, but I really enjoyed listening to these voice actors in this third book so I don't really have a preference read whichever version you want to. They are both great. Those are all the reviews that I have and I will say that for all five of the books that I reviewed there were no significant formatting differences between the print version or the audio version. None of these had music or sound effects in the audio and the books didn't really have pictures or anything that you'd be missing out on if you listened to it. They were just pretty straightforward text with like chapter headers and that was it. But those are my thoughts on all five of these audiobooks and I hope that you found them helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching this. If you have listened to any of these audiobooks and you have have similar thoughts or different thoughts, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the comments. Bye!